Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston from Blue <laughs> Blooming Catholic Life and I'm back because my husband bought me a backup drive for all my videos as well as a backup for the backup. The last backup I got got corrupted and I didn't have a backup for the backup so I lost all those videos and so that's how my iPad and my iPhone got all filled up with videos for you and then I couldn't make any more. Um, but he solved the problem. Hopefully we're doing good. My phone can breathe a sigh of relief. I can bring some of my apps back. I was down to the bare minimum of apps. I offloaded everything just to use the most space for you. And now I can review this gift I got. Um, so Benedictus Press, if you know um, Benedictus, the new traditional mass little book that you can take to mass with you. Ugh, I can't talk today. Sorry. It's been a whole two weeks like since I've made a new video. <laughs> So the Benedictus, the like it's like the Magnificat, but for the traditional mass. It has lots of great Latin prayers and even just the history of the church in it. I'm loving that. And so they decided to start a little uh, press. So it's Benedictus Press, which is at PrayBenedictus.com. Super easy there. And this is the first book they released, Dies Irae the sequence of the mass for the dead and so i got this for myself thinking my husband wasn't going to get me anything for easter and then surprise um i can now open this book because he got me the super duper cadillac of scissors these are the fiskers titanium so i have the regular pair and, and amazed by those this is the titanium so it's stronger so now i can open boxes the other one i was using mainly to open uh, cut paper and open packages. So you're probably wondering why I'm reviewing these. You know I've been diagnosed with RA and had that horrible thing going on with poison ivy. As well, my son is a lefty and he's never been able to use our regular scissors. So first you slide back that lock. Look, they're spring loaded and they're good for left or right handers. So if you've got a lefty in your family, obviously these are not kid scissors, but still. Um, and probably overkill to use the titanium ones on this book but I was having trouble with scissors and this just makes everything easier so yeah I'll use these ones more to break down uh, boxes and just things around the house and the other ones in the kitchen that I can use to open pack food packaging I want to keep those separate so hooray to the husband for that let's get back to our book review Obviously you've noticed it's it's gorgeous. I mean, it's a little hard to see because of the shiny plastic on it. It's a gorgeous book. Um, what does this feel? This might be leather or leatherette. Ooh. <laughs> that was unexpected. Um, what can I compare it to? Here's a little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So it's not, okay, so it's bigger that way, but I think they're, I think this little office is actually thicker. So it's not, not a terribly huge book. Let's get in and see what it is. You know, uh, being a Franciscan is a big deal, praying for the dead. And so I thought this would be, could be a really great book. Don't judge me for still having my Christmas clock on. I love my Christmas clock. Let's see here. Right here, there is a picture in the beginning and it has a Bible quote in Latin and English so that we can learn it right there. Great, it's from the Apocalypse. If you're Novus Ordo or reading a newer translation of the Bible, that's Revelation, but we're going to call it Apocalypse. Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, even those that pierced him. Eh. Ecce venit cum nebulus, nebibus, et videbit eum omnis oculis, et qui eum pupergerent. I'd have to practice that a while. So it's the sequence of the Mass for the Dead, dogmatically and aesthetically interpreted for devotional reading and meditation by the Reverend Niklaus Gier, G-I-H-R-D-D, -D, translated from the fourth German edition by the Reverend Joseph J. Schmidt. I'll let you see that there again. So it is for devotional reading and meditation. Very nice. A lot of people are into Memento Mori right now, so this could be a good book if you're into that. It does say, so the original book was in 1927. Wow, this is going to be deep, I feel like. Scripture references follow the Dewey Ream. Now, I know you guys like to correct me. I'm going to try and focus. Is it Dewey Reams Bible? Per the imprint of John Murphy Company, Baltimore, 1899. 
Oh, that, that picture I showed you was The Last Judgment from The Small Passion by Albrecht Dürer in 1511, added from the public domain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Copyright, copyright, copyright. Uh, the contents are pretty easy to understand. Introduction, text of the sequence with English translations, an interpretation, and then there's appendix, formal equivalence, English translation. Pretty easy to read there. Pretty easy to read. There's not much. Uh, oh, and then we have scripture citation abbreviations. Oh, well, this is pretty easy to say. But again, I'm switching over to the, can I say it? the Douay Reims. You guys have me afraid to speak now. Um, so not all the books are named exactly the same. And so this is a handy little scripture citation abbreviations because I'm used to like REV for revelations. And that's not what they're going to have, is it? No. Oh, and these are done alphabetically. So 1 Corinthians, 1 Esdras, 1 John, 1 Kings, 1 Maccabees, 1 Paralipomemnon. <laughs> oh, that contemporary, that's the Chronicles. <gasps> oh, this is so much better than I thought, friends. Look, so it gives you the abbreviation, the do a reams version, and then what it is in the contemporary Bible's name. So those of us just getting used to it, um, this is going to be a huge help. Can you see some of those? <sighs> anyway, huge help. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Publisher's Preface. Monsignor Nicolaus Gehr, a scholar and priest of the Archdiocese of Freiburg, was regarded as one of the most outstanding German linguists and dogmatic theologians of his time. Contemporary to the great French liturgist Dom Prosper Geringer, I can't say that right, Gehr's monumental book, The Holy Sacrifice of the Mass in 1877, would have similarly far-reaching influence on the theological discourse of several pontificates, including those of Blessed Pius IX, St. Pius X, Benedict the Fifteenth and Pius the Sixth, Gehr's dogmatic and aesthetical commentary on the Dies Irae, the greatest and most poetic of all sequences in the classical Roman rite, was first published in Freiburg at the turn of the twentieth century, and exhibits some the same degree of expansive scholarship and depth of insight found in his magnum opus. His theological precision is here blended with a spirit of profound unction, allowing the reader an extended meditation on the Dies Irae that is as informative as it is moving. The author's mastery of ancient languages and impressive command a primary source material makes for a highly readable text if it does challenge the conventions of source citation at times. <laughs> yeah, some of your older s sources are really hard to cite. In this new edition of Gear's book, For the Benefit of Readers in English, we have added translations of several Latin quotations and expanded annotations whenever possible. Where original references are obscure, we have simply reproduced these without alteration. <laughs> oh my God, I am so geeking out. The introduction then starts out with the Franciscus Thomas, Thomas of Chilano. Oh, they have me there. Thomas, I had no idea that Thomas of Chilano, if you don't know him, if you're a Franciscan scholar, most of the early writings um, that we have of Franciscans are, are Thomas of Chilano. I mean, he's huge in Franciscan tradition. So, okay. And it tells us here, Chilano is a village in the, in the Abruzzi. Well, that helps. Who lived and labored in the first half of the 13th century, about 1200 to 1255, was a companion in the first biographer of St. Francis of Assisi. The now almost universally accepted tradition that this Franciscan was the author of the S. Era is based on the testimony of a certain Bartholomew of Pisa, who in 1385 wrote a book entitled Liber Conform. Now, I'm just opening myself up to you guys. Anyway, he wrote a book. And we read there that Father Thomas is reputed to be the author of this, which is sung in the Masses for the Dead. We shall have to accept this account in view of the fact that later references to other authors are entirely groundless. So they can't disprove this one. The other ones, they, they can. So we're going to say it's by Thomas of Toulon. And it says the this has come to us in three different versions or redactions. And the question, which was the original text, cannot be satisfactorily answered. We're going to let you read the introduction yourself, but so it's going to go a bit into the scholarship and origins of the book first, but really that's like two pages front and back. That's nothing. The, the text of the sequence, 
Okay, it's written out. It's your standard dual column, Latin and English. Pretty easy there. They are numbered so that you can refer to them. Um, so you could meditate on them right there. Just read a little section, say, just work your way through. How many are there? I mean, there's just 19 here, 19, 19. Yep, so you could totally do that. You could just go right there and meditate on them. And then the, the biggest section is probably the interpretation. Yeah, so the main section is the interpretation. So they include their meditations. You can do a little Lexio Divina on the individual passages, but note that they're numbered, so it's gonna be easier. I'm betting they're gonna refer back to it off and on. The interpretation, the story of creation is not the story of an endless series of recurrent changes. Story of creation, okay, they've got me hooked. Nor is the eternal process of development in progress. The world as we know it will come to an end. The curtain will fall at last on the historical drama of man and the world in which he lives. The end of the world, quote, the end of all things, see, and so there's a reference. Whoa. Yeah, the references are in different languages here. That is a reference in three languages, friends. <laughs> but the text itself is so accessible. So it gives you those references so that you can see like the original Greek or the original Latin, whichever it was, I don't know. But it's just so accessible. It's so easy to read. So we're gonna start here on page 13 on the first stanza. Of all the portentous events that shall mark the end of time, the author of the Dies Irae has singled out what is generally accepted as the most dreadful and terrifying, namely the destruction of the universe by fire. Dies Irae, Dies Ila, Sove Saculum in Favela, Teste David cum Sibia. A day of wrath that is that day, which will destroy the world and turn it into ashes, as David and the Sibyl testify. In this first verse of her hymn, the last day is briefly described as a dreadful day of wrath, and this particular phrase is undoubtedly chosen in order to fill the hearts of the guilty sinner with fear and trembling. The Holy Scriptures designates the Christian era in which we live as the last times. And all of these references, remember, have the abbreviations that were in the beginning of the book. Um, this is totally accessible, and it's lovely. They really go in. So the first stanza, let's just see how much is just done on the first stanza. It's at the bottom of page 13, like really the bottom of page 13. Let's see how far I can get it. And it almost goes line by line at some points. Whew. So the bottom, that's 13 to 26. So it's the very bottom of 13, but it's just missing the very bottom of 26. So we're gonna say 14 to 26. That's what, like 12 pages? That's pretty good for for just a little, little, just this, 12 pages, just on that. Um, so great reflections in here. I'm really impressed with that. It goes all the way through to the end. Um, the six concluding lines. End notes. There's end notes. So in this case, they use parenthetical citations for references to scripture as well as um, just some of the original words, like here it has the Lord in quotes and in parentheses, Dominus. Um, so it has parenthetical, but when it's something longer, it's going to be in the end notes. Um, and sometimes those end notes are like Jerome, commentary on Isaiah, book 14, chapter 51, verse 6. And sometimes it's going to be um, like a note, not a citation. It's going to be a note. Um, what is here at the end? Ah, at the end, okay, I didn't understand what they were saying in the beginning, but in the end, it's a formal equivalence English translation. So it gives you an earlier translation, the text of the sequence. So the first line will be, that day of wrath, that dreadful day. But technically, it's the day of wrath, that day. So set that day of wrath, that dreadful day, it's the day of wrath, that day. So one is completely equivalent and the other one is done poetically. So they give you the poetic one first and then the formal equivalence in the back. That is super awesome, helpful. I really like that. I like that they took the time to do that. And then they're gonna tell you more about Benedictus books. 
that is traditional, accessible, and beautiful. And absolutely, I agree 100%. This is lovely. Um, again, I don't know what this cover is exactly, but it has a good hand feel and being um, hardback is going to make it a little bit more sturdy that I can carry it around with me. You know, I love the ones that just fit in my bag, but this is also, this is lovely. I love this little volume. Okay, that's going on my list. Eh, is this going to make it to my nighttime list or is this going to have to be a daytime book? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> if you have thoughts on that, if you've already looked at this and you have an opinion on whether this is something to do during the day or right before bed, let me know. It could be too frightening right before bed. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, God bless you, friends. Check out the new books from Benedictus Books. This is literally the first one. It is lovely and and totally accessible and totally scholarly. It seems to me, I know this is just like an unboxing, but it seems to me this is going to be the perfect book. And Thomas Chilano, like Franciscan high five, right? <laughs> God bless you, friends. Bye.